The first video I ever did on this channel was my review on Resident Evil 3 The Remake. Now, I'm not a horror fan by any means, but Resident Evil is probably the only exception to the rule. Well, that and maybe Alien Isolation. Anyways, Resident Evil 7 was the first Resident Evil game I ever played and actually thoroughly enjoyed. So when Resident Evil 8 The Village was announced, I was both excited and horrified at the same time. Resident Evil 8 Village has just released, and if you can't tell, it's the 8th entry in the series. The Village acts as a sequel to Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, and you'll play as Ethan Winters, the character you played as in Resident Evil 7. Quick recap from the previous game, your wife Mia has been missing for 3 years, and you find that she's alive, but not everything is as it seems. Mia isn't acting herself, the Baker family are crazy and enhanced, and it wouldn't be a Resident Evil game without some kind of bioweapon causing problems. You take care of the bioweapon, save Mia, and everything is happy again, until Resident Evil 8. Sorry. Resident Evil 8 Village starts off with Chris Redfield killing Mia and kidnapping your daughter Rose and whisking you away to a mysterious village where of course, being a Resident Evil game, there's monsters and creatures. Now if you haven't seen any trailers or you just haven't been on the internet for the past couple of months and you found my channel, hey thanks, but you would have seen everyone go nuts for this entry's villain, Lady Dimitrescu, a giant woman with a giant... a uh, hat. She's beautiful, she's rich, she's got huge tracks of land. You need to find your daughter Rose and leave the village intact, it's pretty straightforward. The setting for Resident Evil 8 Biohazard was a disgusting run-down house in the middle of a swamp, where here in Village it's quite the opposite. Sure, the village itself is quite simple with no technology, but Lady Demetrescu's castle is very similar to that of the original Spencer Mansion in some aspects. Rooms are clean with fireplaces in every room. I wanted a room with a fireplace, you brainless luggage monkey! Like the one in your brochure! And just like basically every other Resident Evil game, Dimitrescu's castle is full of puzzles and boss fights. Also being a title called Village, Resident Evil 8's map size is huge, with a fair amount of extra tasks to do like hidden weapons, collectibles, and being able to roam back into the village to explore and look for resources. Without going into spoilers, you'll also experience other environments which are a little similar to that of that Silent Hill demo we got a couple of years ago with tight corridors and eerie sounds and small things like doors opening and picture frames falling off the wall. There are dark woods with bodies hanging from branches, creatures running around and whoever thought of rope tying crows to a tree is a horror genius, but also someone should keep an eye on them because that shit's insane. There was one area that reminded me a lot of the final scenes from Terminator and Terminator 2, while another area had a bit of a Freddy Krueger's boiler room vibe to it. Gameplay is basically exactly the same as Resident Evil 7 Biohazard with some small changes. Rather than Ethan having a smartwatch that tells you the status of your health, you'll bring up an inventory screen and you'll be able to tell your health bar from there. Just like all other Resident Evil games, you'll need to manage your inventory with larger weapons taking up more space than others. Obviously, like a Resident Evil game, it's full of puzzles, horror, crafting, crafting resources, and inventory management. Unlike Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, which came out recently, resources don't take up inventory space, so finding scrap and gunpowder won't take up valuable space that ammo, weapons, or medkits need. Speaking of medkits, they work exactly the same as they did in the previous Resident Evil game. For example, in Resident Evil 7, Ethan took a relatively serious hand injury and stapled his hand back together and poured a medkit on top of it, and it works the same here. Now again, I won't show you it because it's a bit spoilery, but you get my point. Gunplay 2 is exactly the same as Resident Evil 7, and if you've never played Resident Evil 7, it's pretty straightforward shooting mechanics, but it's nothing special. But Resident Evil 7 and 8 aren't shooters, they're horror survival. However, as you progress, you'll be able to upgrade your weapons and even purchase new ones that do a heap of damage. Then there's Duke, basically what I look like when Mrs. Duty says we're having KFC for dinner. Duke works a little bit like a safe zone rule. If you're sharing a room or area with Duke, you'll know you're in a safe area, where there'll generally be a typewriter to save the game and a moment or two to calm down after being chased by the stuff of nightmares. Art, I don't want to alarm you, but there may be a boogeyman or boogeyman in the house! Duke, however, is a storefront where you'll be able to buy weapons, weapon upgrades, ammo, medkits, and food. Now you'll be able to provide food like animals and fish back to Duke who will then make meals for you. And meals will provide you with permanent buffs like increasing your health, your durability, or how fast you run. Graphically, Resident Evil 8 is without a doubt one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. 
Of course it runs on the RE engine and I was running Village on a 3070 with HDR and ray tracing turned on and it didn't skip a beat. Lady Demetrescu and her daughters are beautiful to look at but also as you look closer at them you can see how fucked up they are. Each character is not only stunning to look at, and yes, that includes Duke, but they're further brought to life by their voice actors and the fluidity of their movements. Lady Demetrescu's presence demands respect and fear at the same time, and while I searched online and couldn't find anything, I swear to God, Duke is voiced by Mark Hamill. If not, it's someone doing a great impression of him. Forgive my manners. Call me the Duke. Now to business. Weapons, ammunition, healing salves, Anything you desire, I can provide. Environments too, while horrifying, are beautiful at the same time. First time seeing the village and seeing Castle Demetrescu or Demetrescu in the distance it had that Count Dracula feeling to it. And yes, it might seem obvious as fuck, but a Resident Evil game that has vampire styles to it just felt fresh, at least to me. That and Lady Demetrescu and her daughters. Damn, son. Come on, guys, take it easy. She's a mom. Now it goes without saying, but Capcom, in my opinion, are the masters of horror. Now yes, I said I don't play any real horror games unless it's co-op horror with mates so I can hear them laugh and scream, but Resident Evil, dude, it's on a tier of its own. If you're a horror fan and you're wondering whether Resident Evil 8 is for you, and if you're a fan of vampires and insane monsters and puzzles, survival horror, or you just enjoyed Resident Evil 7, then yeah, Resident Evil 8 is for you. Thankfully, in Village 2, there's a button quickly mapped to do a 180 turn and get the fuck out of there, and that came in handy on multiple occasions. Lady Demetrescu, or Demetrescu, works similar to that of, say, Jack Baker, Nemesis, or Mr. X. She'll roam around the halls of her castle hunting you down. But unlike these previous characters in Resident Evil, Lady Demetrescu, or Demetrescu, is 2.9 meters tall, and she literally has to crouch under the doors to get through them. That's a huge bitch! On top of having to listen and avoid Lady Demetrescu, you'll also need to pay attention to her daughters who will appear out of nowhere and chase you down just like Mummy Dearest. Now for anyone wondering, Resident Evil 8 can be replayed with different weapons and modifiers just like in previous games. You'll be able to use weapons that you couldn't previously use in your initial playthrough as well. There's also a concept art gallery, model viewers, behind the scenes videos to watch as well once you've finished the game the first time. Basically what you've gotten previously in other Resident Evil games. Finally, there's the Mercenaries mode where you'll face off against varying enemy types with time limits, ammo, and weapon limitations, as well as pickups. It feels a little similar to that of Devil May Cry, and you'll be scored and gain points from killing enemies. It wasn't really my jam, but if you love these modes in previous titles, then hey, you might like this Mercenaries mode. While Resident Evil 8 Village is a standout title in my opinion, there are some flaws that removed me from the game. Now, obviously, if you've seen gameplay of the village, you'll notice that the ladies of the manor aren't just your only problem. Just like in all Resident Evil games, there is cannon fodder enemies that will soak up your ammo, but at the start of the game, you'll only have a knife and very low pistol ammo. Getting in a knife fight with some of these enemy variants, though, they'll strike at you before standing there looking scary. You'll be able to land about three or four attacks before they sort of go back into an attack stance getting ready to attack you again. There was one cutscene about three quarters of the way through the game that had about a 10 second delay on what was happening. Now again, I can't show you this due to spoilers, but you would hear a character talk and then 10 seconds later they would be doing the relevant action to what they were saying, only for the character models to be doing something completely different. There are also moments where character models sort of just walked in place, like this shambling enemy who was just walking into a wall while I was hiding inside a vent. Now I also started a second playthrough and there was another time delay with what was happening on screen, but it was only about two to three seconds and you know, here's what I saw. Hmm. Uh, starting to go a little stale. Then let's devour his man flesh quickly, Mother. But I am the one who captured him. Now, now, daughters. First, I must inform Mother Miranda. Also, just like in Resident Evil 2 and 3 and 7, and they're the only ones I played, but just like in those Resident Evil games, safe rooms are safe from anything. If you've got Lady Demetrescu chasing you down and you run straight into a safe room, she'll immediately stop chasing you, look around the room like she's lost you, and then just roam around the map again. It could have been cool that the safe room door will lock if a threat like Lady Demetrescu is within eyesight, forcing you to loop around and break line of sight before the door opens safely for you. Finally, and this is a small random nitpick, but at the start of the game during the prologue I walked into a bathroom and there's no mirror reflection for Ethan, and throughout the game I went looking too and no mirror reflections. But here in this cutscene, 
Lady Demetrescu has a reflection and also how does she not see Ethan hanging outside the window? Honestly though, these are the only problems I had with Resident Evil 8. The level and map design is fantastic and you'll constantly find yourself lost in referencing your map with the added tension of being chased by monsters, witches who turn into swarms of bugs and giant Lady Deathstrike. Having a Jaws-esque moment in a flooded village being chased down by monsters in a warehouse, even just the beautiful halls of Demetrescu's castle are impressive. Having Resident Evil 8 set in a village with multiple locations with castles, forests, swamps, dungeons full of blood had me excited to see what environment was up next, but also terrified that my neighbours would hear me scream like I murdered a houseplant. That came from Flanders house! If you've got a next-gen console and you're looking for something that will excite you for what's coming next or what my console can actually do, I think Resident Evil 8 Village will show you what your Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are capable of. For me, this was the first game that gave my new PC a proper run, and I was blown away during the damn opening moments of Village in graphics alone. Resident Evil 8 Village improves in all aspects in my opinion from Biohazard, but it also creates an accessible title for anyone who hasn't played a Resident Evil game before and it actually might be my favourite entry in the series. If you've never played a Resident Evil game before and you've seen the trailers or you've seen pre-order cases at your local retailer, give it a look. It's not a generic zombie game and don't take that as a knock against the recent remakes of older entries or zombie games in general, but if a third person horror game just isn't your jam and you want something fresh, do not skip out on Resident Evil 8 Village. Mother Miranda is gonna love you. <laughs> Ha 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 